How many of you have heard of the phrase bigger picture? Have you ever thought about what exactly that means? Usually people say the phrase bigger picture when there's more to the story than we can actually see. And sometimes in our lives, it can be hard to see the bigger picture. Take right now, for example. Right now, you might notice how good this place looks. Like how the furniture fits in with all the decorations and how it looks a little bit used but not so messy that it never gets cleaned. The truth is, we set this space up like two days ago and you're just seeing what we want you to see. Behind the scenes, it becomes apparent that there's a lot of work and a lot of mess that goes into making you see what we really want you to see. If you could see the bigger picture, you'd realize just how unorganized a lot of this space is and kind of messy. It's not so picture perfect when you can see everything. When it comes to so many things in our lives, we have a tendency to focus on only one small part of what's happening. We don't always pay attention to what's going on behind the scenes. We tend to look at just one circumstance or one event or one detail and think about the way it's impacting us right now. And when we do that, we miss out on everything else that's happening around us. There's so much more we may not yet see. We're missing the bigger picture. I think this happens in a lot of areas of our lives, but the one we're gonna talk about today is our families. I know all of our families may be different from each other, but I think no matter what, we can all agree on this. When it comes to our families, we tend to think we're the main character in the story. Think about it. We'd rather have everyone else on our schedule of staying up late and sleeping in. We'd love it if family meals could have only the things we like to eat, like mac and cheese and pizza and cupcakes and ice cream and candy and not things like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and fish and... Did I say Brussels sprouts? I really don't like Brussels sprouts, right? We don't think twice when asking our parents to spend money on things like games and sneakers and concert tickets because those are things we want. Basically, without even realizing it, our actions say to our families that we want them to focus first on how we feel, what we need, and what they can do to make life look the way we want it to look. Maybe in your family, things are a little different. Maybe all the attention actually is focused on you. Your parents are all up in your business. They wanna know every detail of your life. Your grades are the most important, your activities are the biggest deal, and your feelings are the top priority of the conversation. It's all about what you're doing, how you're feeling, and what you're thinking. And honestly, it's just too much. Your family is driving you crazy with all the questions and conversations and attention. And listen, I get it. That does sound like a lot, but can I just point out one thing? In this case, you too are looking at what's happening in your family in a way that's all about you. You're noticing only how all the attention is impacting you. You're not necessarily thinking about your parents' intentions. You see, whether we really are the center of attention in our families or just wish that we were, we're not seeing the bigger picture. We're not seeing that there may be a lot more happening in our families, things we don't know about or understand yet that's causing our parents or siblings to treat us the way that they do. Or we're not seeing the bigger picture of our own actions, that the way we view ourselves and treat our families has an impact on them too. And here's the deal. Missing that bigger picture can cause a lot of frustration and hurt within our families. These types of tricky family dynamics have been around for as long as there have been families. In fact, some of the craziest stories in the Bible are about this very topic, and trust me, these family stories are a lot crazier than any of us could even imagine. Today, we're gonna look at one guy in the Bible who found himself in the middle of a pretty crazy family situation. His name was Joseph, and he was actually a really big deal in the Old Testament which is a collection of books in the Bible written before Jesus came to earth. Joseph was one of the youngest sons of a man named Jacob. And Joseph had a lot of older brothers, like 10 of them. So we're talking a pretty big family here. Now Joseph's family probably looked quite a bit different than this family we see here, because obviously they were real people and not cartoons, and there were 10 of them. But one thing that's true about all families, both back then and now, is that the relationships in them can be tricky. So that being said, let's take a look at what made some of the relationships in Joseph's family so tricky. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. 
So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. So basically, Jacob loved Joseph more than all of his other children, and he did nothing to hide it. Jacob could have just said, hey other sons, Joseph, lucky charms with marshmallows, or just the marshmallow part, really. And you guys are Brussels sprouts. I don't know about you, but if I were one of Joseph's brothers, I'd be super jealous. It's like Jacob gave Joseph the nicest, most expensive headphones that money could buy, and the brothers, nothing. Can you see how this might create some tension in their family? Well, what happened next only made matters worse. Take a look. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. If this dream sounds a little weird to you, it's because it is. It was a symbol implying that one day, Joseph's brothers would bow down to him. If one of your siblings came to you with a crazy dream, you'd probably just roll your eyes and move on. It's just a dream. But in this culture, dreams were a much bigger deal. They were actually believed to be predictions of the future. So when Joseph shared his dream about his brothers actually bowing down to him, they believed it was really going to happen. And as the passage tells us, hearing that made Joseph's brothers hate him even more. What's worse, in the next few verses, Joseph went on to share another dream he had. This time, where the stars and the moon and the sun bowed down to worship him. As you can probably guess, his brothers got even more irritated after hearing about the second dream. But what do dreams and all this family drama have to do with us? I think what we can learn from this story is this. When we can't see the bigger picture, we should remember the impact we have on our families. Scripture doesn't tell us what everyone in Joseph's family was thinking or feeling, but we can guess a lot based on their actions. It seems like everyone, Joseph, his brothers, even his dad, didn't notice how their actions affected each other. You could say they were missing some major self-awareness and they definitely didn't see the bigger picture. All that combined caused a lot of conflict. Think about it. Jacob loved his son Joseph so much that he treated him differently than the rest of his brothers. Jacob didn't see the bigger picture, that he was causing a lot of tension and conflict between his sons. And Joseph's brothers weren't aware of the way their strong and harsh responses to Joseph impacted him. They were reacting to the hurt caused by their dad's favoritism of Joseph. But that didn't mean their treatment of Joseph didn't hurt him. Even Joseph struggled in the self-awareness department. He knew his brothers were jealous of the way their father loved and favored him. But still, Joseph came to them with not just one, but two dreams about how great he would be one day. He didn't see the bigger picture of how sharing those things might hurt his brothers even more. Everybody in this story was missing the bigger picture. They weren't paying attention to how they were negatively affecting their other family members. Honestly, I think that's true for a lot of the family tension and stress we experience. Typically, nobody's trying to be self-centered. We're simply trying to make sure that our needs are getting met. We're trying to make sure things go the way we want them to go. We're not trying to hurt anybody else. We're honestly not thinking about anybody else at all. But that's the problem. When we only think about ourselves, we miss the bigger picture. We miss the way our actions impact others. Maybe you feel like everyone else in your family isn't paying attention to how their actions impact you. Maybe your mom lied about something, or your dad left, or one of your siblings has hurt you repeatedly and without consequence. To you, I'd say this. There's more to those stories. The people who hurt you or your family, they usually do that because somebody hurt them. They're reacting out of their own pain. Does that make what they did okay? Absolutely not. And I really encourage you to talk to someone you trust if you're being mistreated or harmed in some way. But it can help us see the bigger picture when it comes to the way we feel about them. Here's the point. When you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. So many of us are hyper aware of the way our family affects us, but we're rarely aware of how we affect them. That's what happened with Joseph's story. And look how that turned out. Not so great. Everybody was upset. And as you'll see in later weeks, things got worse and worse before they got better. Instead of letting this be the story of our own families, we can flip the way we see what's happening. 
We can work on becoming more aware of how our words, actions, and behaviors impact our families. When you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. So what does this actually look like? How do we start seeing the bigger picture when it comes to how our actions impact our families? First, be aware. I think we have to work on developing an accurate view of ourselves. We have to be aware of how our actions impact others. Start by asking yourself, how is the way I'm acting affecting my family? How can I put my family first? What do I need to give up or put aside to serve my family? How can I show up and love my family? What can I do to put my family needs before my own? Paying attention to how our actions affect others is hard. It's not always easy for us to see the way we're impacting other people. If you aren't sure, ask someone close to you for honest help. A small group leader, a parent, a friend, a sibling. Go to someone who knows you well and will speak the truth in love. Ask them to help you see something in yourself that maybe you can't see on your own. Second, take a step. Take one step to change that thing in yourself or to be more aware of the way it impacts others. Then choose a different response. Maybe you always speak harshly to your younger sibling, so you need to practice recognizing and correcting that tone. Maybe you leave your clothes or dishes or school stuff around the house for your parents to clean up, so you need to practice better awareness to pick up after yourself. Or maybe you need to control your temper instead of blowing up at your family when you're tired or frustrated or mad or hungry. Whatever it is, pause and think about how you're affecting others. Look at how you're impacting the bigger picture and make a move to change it for the better. Remember, when you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. As you head out, I want you to think about this question. What's one way I might be causing conflict or tension in my family?